Hi guys, this is Stormouse03. Welcome back to my Dishonored Death of the Outsider 100% walkthrough where I am showing you how to get all of the achievements or trophies on this game. This is mission number two called Follow the Ink. And this is part of the first playthrough that you want to do. And in case you haven't watched the first mission and are just tuning in now, I'll give you a little bit of information about what this guide is. I am showing you how to do 29 out of the 30 achievements or trophies on this first playthrough. It's on the regular game. And then we'll do the last one on Original Game Plus. And that's because that's not available to select at the beginning. So you have to do two playthroughs. This is the first one, and this is the one where we're doing the majority of the achievements or trophies. And so I'm showing you how to do all of this in complete stealth. And so you should get the ghost ticked at the bottom if you're following how to do this. And so you should get your shadow achievement or trophy at the end. However, you do not need to do that, and I'd actually recommend that you do the shadow run on your second run. I'm going to show you how to do that on the second playthrough as well. And so you can kind of pick whichever one you want to do. I just wanted to give people the most options possible and to show you that you can do it on either playthrough. But I would recommend doing it on the second one because you're, you're having less to deal with there. And so you won't have to do all of the contracts or find all the paintings. And it's just, in general, less stuff to do. So I'm showing you right now some of the new abilities. So your Displace is kind of like Blink, except you can put a marker down, run around. And then when you get back into range of it, move. And so just remember that you have to to hit that button twice you have to put the marker down and then you have to hit left trigger again to actually displace over to the spot where you marked and that is a really cool mechanic i think but if you're used to the regular blink mechanic you want to make sure that you're hitting it twice and that you just kind of know what you're doing so I'm going to move over here and you can go through the door. I'm just showing you an alternate route. So you can go through the door there or you can get up on these pipes and get down. Either way works. Just doing that means that you don't have to walk through the dogs and if you nudge up against one of them it will, will wake them up and it'll alert them. and. That'll be bad. So here I'm going to show you how to do two achievements or trophies at once. One of them is to displace into an enemy and the other is to displace into an enemy that you have uh, set the marker down during foresight. And so you put on foresight, you use that and you hit right trigger to place your displace marker inside of one of these wolfhounds. And it's, it's sleeping, it's not going to move, so it should be really easy for you to just displace into it once you get your mana back. And so you just hit left trigger, you displace into it. It's going to hurt you a little bit because displacing hurts you some, but it shouldn't be too bad. And so there you go, that's clever planning to displace into a marker placed using foresight and occupational hazard making an enemy explode into pieces using displace so you get both of those in one go and i'm gonna go ahead and kill this other wolfhound because you know why not also <laughs> another thing to note so i'm gonna be killing people on this first playthrough i'm not gonna kill everybody I'm doing, I think, kind of a healthy mixture of killing and knocking out. And so, it just bear in mind, it doesn't matter mo in most cases whether you kill people or whether you don't. In some of the contracts, you have to kill people. And 
in certain cases you need to leave people alive so that you can take their bodies different places or you can use semblance on them to take their form etc etc so just bear in mind it doesn't really make any difference if you kill people or not on these playthroughs so i'm gonna knock this lady out and I'm going to loot her corpse. And then there's a couple of things in this place to pick up. Uh, as I mentioned in the first video, I am going to be picking up some of these things. There's a bone charm. Some of the things that are worth coins so that you have coin to be able to purchase a few upgrades that I'm going to recommend that you purchase. So right now I'm looking at my at my wheel and that's a reminder for me to tell you guys that I'm only using this agility bone charm. It was found in mission one in the second level of the eyeless place and it's in the vice. It's the one in the vice and so that one has always been in the same place for me but a lot of these other ones like the one that we just picked up uh, the corrupt ones, the, the just regular ones, anything except the black bone charms, which are those semicircular ones, like the agility one. All of the other ones seem to be random, and so you may or may not get the ones that I have. And so I'm not going to be using any of those because I don't want to use something that you might not have. But just know that some of them have good effects on them, and if you get one that, you know makes your semblance last longer or makes your foresight last longer. There's one that makes enemies less aware of you when you mark them using foresight. So there's lots of different ones that actually give you an advantage. And so if you get those, feel free to use them, but I'm not gonna be using them because I don't wanna use stuff that you guys will not have. So I am using the agility one because uh, I believe it is guaranteed to be in the spot that I mentioned in mission number one. And so I showed that at the beginning of my guide. And so hopefully everybody's picked that up. It's not super necessary. And I don't think that there are many things that I do where it is necessary. Actually, I don't think there's anything that I'm doing where it is necessary. But it's just nice to be able to jump a little bit higher. So... I'm using displace most of the time to get up to things, but just, just bear in mind that I am using that bone charm. When you come in here, you will read the ledger here, and that will give you the next places to go on this mission. And there are kind of two people that we need to deal with to get some keys and that's kind of the overall mission here is to get those two keys but there's a lot of extra stuff to do in this level there's going to be four contracts and they're actually kind of tricky and so don't worry i'm going to be showing you how to do all that stuff but uh, this is a long one so you want to come here to the tattoo machine and tattoo yourself so that you can go into the areas where the eyeless are without them being hostile to you. It's, uh, it's really helpful to have this done. You don't have to do this because you can get into that place by uh, using semblance on one of the eyeless themselves. But that's a little bit trickier to pull off and it's definitely trickier to pull off without being seen so i would definitely recommend that you just go ahead and get the tattoo there and now we're going to be moving on through the level here and so there will be some guards patrolling up here you can use foresight to mark them so that you kind of know where they're looking there should be two guards and a wolfhound. And it looks like the wolfhound is asleep right now. But if anybody gets even mildly alerted, that wolfhound will wake up and start patrolling along with the guards. So 
you can mark those guys and you can see how you can uh, you can see that yellow outline through walls and stuff and that just it really helps you be able to tell where somebody's looking where somebody's facing you can see when people move all of that good stuff so the there's only three abilities in this particular game but i think they're three really really good ones so the next order of business is to get into this lady's apartment up here and you know you don't actually need to do this because i didn't even use the secret knock but uh this is where it is so if you want to get into sean yun sean yun's house a little bit different way you can you just pick up this thing that says our secret knock and you can go in to his house on the bottom floor instead of going up through the eyeless bar i'm going to be going through the eyeless bar and so yeah it wasn't super necessary to go up here but there are a couple of valuables that you can loot and whatnot and like i said there are going to be a couple of upgrades that I would recommend you go ahead and pick up because they're going to make stealthing through these areas just a little bit easier and I would say I'm only going to buy three of the upgrades throughout this game but I'd recommend that you buy as many as you want there are a lot of ones that are good and so for the purposes of this guide, I'm only using the three ones that are going to help us with shadow because I think that those are valuable to have. And <laughs> right here, I, I realized that I didn't have my agility bone charm on. Somehow, when I was in my menu before, I had changed it. And so... <laughs> You can displace up onto that little lip, but I noticed that I couldn't make the jump, which was weird. So I had accidentally put a different one on, but it, it didn't affect anything in the playthrough, so it was okay. But uh, that's, that's that. And that's the difference that agility makes. You can just jump to some of these ledges instead of having to use your displace. Like I said, it's not 100% necessary, and you can do this without that bone charm. So just in case you don't have it, that is okay. So you want to, when you're doing these displace markers, if you can put them on the up arrows, that means that you're going to displace to the ledge that you want to and go up on top of it every time. If you put it on top of something, like I'm going to show you in a second, um, if you put it on top like that, it's usually going to mean that you're going to go to the place where you want to, but you know every occasionally it'll be off by a little bit and you'll fall off of the edge of it. So at every possibility where you can get the little up arrows when you displace, I would recommend that you use them because they're going to make it easier for you to just be sure that you're going to teleport to the place where you actually want to go to. So that's just some recommendations with that. It's the same as Blink and whatever the other one was called that Emily had in Dishonored 2. They worked the exact same way. Uh, as this. So for folks who are familiar with the Dishonored series, you should be familiar with that. So I'm going to come over here, grab a coin or two out of this place, and I'm going to show you how to get the hooked achievement. And so this is a really good spot to do it, and you're going to be hooking this fisherman right here, which is kind of, kind of funny because, you know, he's fishing and he's the one that gets hooked. Ha ha ha. Anyway, make a save right here because <laughs> this can be really tricky and finicky and it doesn't 
always work, but if it doesn't work for you the first time, just reload and try again. It should work for you. It took me a couple of tries here to get it to actually work, but hopefully the, the spot that I'm going to show you is the spot where you need to put it. So you pick up your hook mine, you hold down LT to make it lethal, and so that should toggle it, and then you want to toss it about right there. It's going to hook the fisherman and toss him over the side, and you should get your achievement or trophy hooked. And that is for send, sending someone flying 40 meters using hook mines. And so you kind of see where I placed it. It's sort of in the middle of those two. Um, it's in the middle of those two little metal pieces or pieces of wood that are sticking out of that part of this bridge right here and you'll see that it hooked him by his hand and tossed his whole rest of his body over now i've had it where it hooks him and it like smacks him into the side of it i've had it where it hooks him and it cuts him in half and his bottom half goes flying off and that doesn't count so like i said it's a little bit finicky this this one but if as long as you make a save there and toss it at the same spot that I tossed it, that should work. Now, if you don't have a hook mine, uh, we picked these up in mission number one, but if you don't have a hook mine, you can pick one up from the black market where we're going to be headed next, and I'll show you those. They're really cheap, so if you don't have one, you can get one there. And so that is that one. It's a long way down there too, isn't it? That's that's what makes this really the perfect spot for that, is that there's such a, a big drop. Because it's these hook mines, it's hard to get them to toss people because usually there's just not enough room for the body to to move. So anyway, I was I was showing you where it should go for a long while and now I'm going to reload the save and I recommend you reloading this save because whenever people are dead that sometimes and, and bodies can be found so the hand was still visible there whenever that happens sometimes the guards will patrol outside of their normal patrol routes and you just don't want that. And so to reduce any of the randomness of that potentially happening, I went ahead and reloaded the save. And I would recommend that you do that too. And so right now I'm using Foresight to mark all three of the guards that are in this area. And then I'm going to show you how to get to the black market. So the guards are sort of in a bad spot for me to get to the black market this way. But there is another way to get to the black market, which is actually a lot safer. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to want to displace up to this balcony. And to get up there, you're probably going to have to move. I, I could have, you know, jumped and gotten it up there but this is the easier way i try not to do too many of those fancy <laughs> fancy moves because i want people to not struggle not that that's super difficult to pull off it's just jumping and placing your marker at the height of your jump but that was easier. It's the easier path in. There are some things to pick up in here to earn you some money before we head to the black market, which is nice. And the market itself is just down those stairs. There's also a couple of things to pick up in this room right here, although not a whole lot. So we're going to head downstairs. And at the 
bottom of these stairs. We can hop right out of this little window and go straight down to the black market. You can also hop out of the window that's a little farther to the left if you're concerned about people seeing you. And so once we get here, you want to go ahead and pick up the four contracts. It's going to be Kidnap the Bartender, Death to the Mime, Workplace Harassment, and The Missing Brother. And so we're going to be doing all four of those. And then here is your first opportunity to buy stuff from the black market. And so this person sells gear and he also sells upgrades. And so right here is the hook mine. It only costs 60 coins. So you should have plenty to be able to buy one of those if you haven't already. I am quite certain that I've already shown you where 60 coins are in just the first part of this level. So do not worry about that. If you need one, pick one up. He also sells some random bone charms. And so I had thought that those were guaranteed, that they were the same every time, but they are not. Uh, so these are going to be four random bone charms. I guess maybe some of them are more likely to turn up than others. I have had the one to... Uh, make yourself make it so that wolfhounds don't smell you a couple of times when I'm in here But you can see that that one isn't there right now So I, I really don't know how they randomize these guys. It's a little bit strange to me so Some of these things those two in particular have pretty good st Stats on them the other ones are not so fantastic so you can buy any of those if you want to. I'm not going to be buying any of them because I'm not going to use them. So, the gear. There are a number of good things, but the one that you want to make sure that you buy in order to get an achievement or trophy is this makeshift bolt. And that is for your Voltaic gun. It means that you can make ammunition out of quote-unquote mundane items and so that includes the fountain pen which is what we need to use in order to get the achievement or trophy mightier than the sword which is pretty cool so you want 500 coins to be able to do that you should have picked up more than enough for that in your first mission but if you didn't we're going to be picking up lots of coins throughout this level and so just be aware that you'll need to go back and get that so these three uh silent running silent sprinting and the shadow one concealment finish yeah that's the one so those are the three that I would recommend you purchasing for stealth. The silent running and silent sprinting I think are more important and that's why I bought those first. But the concealment finish is also cool because that means that you're harder to see when you're in shadows, which is nice. And so I'm just showing you a couple of other good ones. The ones to equip extra bone charms. If you're going to be doing combat, the boiled leather armor. So if you're not worried about being sneaky and you're just going to go in and kill stuff, then that's cool. There's also upgrades for a lot of the weapons, you know, grenades and spring razors and things. So a lot of those upgrades can be good, but you don't necessarily need any of them. Like I said, I think the ones for stealth are going to be super helpful when it comes to trying to get your shadow achievement a trophy, which is why I'm purchasing those and showing you to do that and recommending that you do that. So here we go. Your guards are now in a in a better spot and you kind of want to wait for them to get into that pattern where the one is in the in the guard house where he's always going to be and the other one is over to the right and so when that happens you can displace over behind this guard and i'm going to knock him out then i'm going to displace over here and knock this guy out 
And now the third one is not going to move from the place where he is. And so you want to not worry about him. Because he's kind of in the middle of a crowd of people. And if you try to take him out, those people are going to be aware of you and, and see you. And it's just not worth taking all of them out. So don't worry about him. And so now, <laughs> in order to do this, there's a couple of sticky grenades right there, which we're going to use later. Um, so pick those up. And so you can see that there is a fountain pen right there. But to use the fountain pen... What you need to do is uh, have less than 10 shots in your voltaic shot. And so you want to just go over and fire one kind of at nothing. And I'm going to move to the very back of the level just so that nobody gets alerted. I'm going to fire one off. And then I am going to go and pick up that pin. And so the pin you can use because we bought that upgrade and so it says voltaic shot but you can see that it's a fountain pen and so you pick it up and the way that you get it equipped is to switch to something else and then switch back and now you should see it in your voltaic shot and so that is how you get that one in the in the chamber and then you're just gonna look at one of these guys heads and I actually recommend you use the one that's over here because he's farther away from everybody else you just don't want people to hear you and get alerted that guy in there should probably have been fine but this guy is gonna be safer so you just aim at his head and then fire and then your achievement or trophy should pop so there it is, Mightier Than the Sword. Shot a guard in the head with a fountain pen. So that is that taken care of. And now we're going to carry on with the main part of this level. And so you could reload after that, but I'm not going to because this body over here isn't going to get found. And so the one from the hooked achievement or trophy, I knew that people had seen that body in the past and that changed the guards patrol routes. And so that's why I went ahead and reloaded there. But I also knew that that person over there <laughs> isn't going to get found. So I just, it's kind of just getting to know the levels, guys. And so the quest marker is over to the left, but you don't need to go there yet. Trust me, <laughs> you need to get the key from Ivan Jacoby before you go down there. And he is going to be up here on a platform practicing a speech of his. And so you want to not move very far into this area because there are guards but you should be able to get the little arrows on your displace it's a little finicky but you can get it and then displace up here and then you can move from here over onto the balcony on our right and so there is an achievement or trophy associated with dropping this guy through a trapdoor which is right underneath him. And so you get to the trap door by going into this building. And I'd recommend hopping down the stairs like that just so that nobody can possibly see you. <laughs> and then we're going to go into the basement. And this will take you to the trap door and I was confused right here this is why I'm looking around I was confused right there because I thought that there was something to pick up on the the table there but there wasn't there is however a bone charm right here and again it's gonna be an, another random one so use it if it's something good 
going to go through this little hole right here. And then there should be a guard that is on a chair. And you want to use your... I mean, you can kill him if you want to. Again, you can, you can kill these people. You can knock them out. But you just want to do something that takes him out in one shot. So you can see he's getting a little bit suspicious, but that's okay. We're going to knock him out. And then I'm going to move the body here because there has been when I've played this before there has been another guard that just kind of patrols down here and so I didn't want there to be any possibility that that person would see that body so I moved it and so now you want to wait until Ivan is right over the trapdoor. He was just then, but he moved off of it. And so as soon as he moves back onto that trapdoor right there, I'm going to pull this lever and it's going to drop him through the floor. And that will be our next achievement. So pull the lever, he falls down, I push it immediately back so that nobody can see down the hole, and there is our achievement, public shaming. Dropped Ivan Jacoby through the chap door, you pickpocket the key off of him, and you make your way back through. And so that's that one done, easy peasy. And then we're going to head back out through these doors. And on to Ivan's office. And so you just want to hug the right hand side here so that that guard doesn't see you. You can also displace up onto that guard station if you're worried about being seen by the guard there but you should be able to make it around that corner and then we're going to use the key to open up his office and there isn't a, a ton of stuff in here in terms of things to pick up there are a couple of important things though you definitely want to pick up the key that's on his desk because that's one of the ones that we will need for the main mission. So there it is. We pick it up. And that's the first part of the main mission done. And then there's an optional thing that you can do if you pick up uh, the stuff that's in his little safe back here. You can move that picture out of the way. And there's this vial of blood. And now there's a journalist that's in a, a place where we're headed to right now and he's sort of on the way and so I'd recommend that you just go ahead and do this because it will get you some cash that you can use to buy some upgrades and things which is pretty sweet and it's right on the way so it's really it's not out of your way at all so I would recommend doing it so we're going to be heading over to the right, and you can displace up onto this thing. And move forward. And so I'm just barely on this little lip right here. It's a little bit precarious, but you can make it. You can also go up the little lamp posts to the left, so if you didn't like that route, you can use the other. Again, a few things to pick up. I am not going to be picking up as much stuff in the next three missions, guys. I will be picking up things that are sort of on my way and some of the more valuable items. Uh, I'll show you where to get them, but I am... Uh, I'm not going to be picking up as much because you should have enough in these first few missions to be able to buy all the things that you really need. So I'm going to use Foresight and I'm going to mark some of the P 
people who are patrolling around this area. And so there aren't too many guards. You can see there's one that I didn't mark that's kind of right in front of us. Up a little bit. Uh, but if you put your displace marker down beside that pillar, you should be able to move across here. And the only thing you want to be aware of is this guard that's on the corner. And so you see, so you'll see that I obviously uh, was not paying attention to him and almost went up too far. So you want to be aware of him and just wait for him to turn and move and then you're good to go. So displace up here and head on inside. There is a guard right there in front of us as well, but no need to worry about him because he's not really going to move. So we're walking into this bank and this is part of a contract. So if you're not doing the contracts, this is optional. So this is part of the workplace harassment one. And I went ahead and put all of the contracts on so that you can kind of see the icons for the, where they are and the ones that we're going to be doing. So you can see that the other three are out in the bigger area of the map. And this one, is just dealing with this lady and so she's eventually gonna leave nobody should really be alerted to you in here so you can see that she's looking straight at me she does not care and so you can pickpocket her <laughs> if you want to and then if you come out the side here you can displace up onto this little, I don't know, light or whatever it is right there. And then from there onto this lamp post. And the reason why I went to the light and then the lamp post is that the angle to get to the lamp post, the guard saw me. <laughs> and so the, the angle to get to the lamp was better. And that is why I'd recommend doing it that way. Then we're going to just displace over onto these balconies. And on the second one, uh, you'll find the apartment for the journalist that I was talking about before, where you're going to give him the blood vial that we found in Ivan Jacoby's office. So we talked to him. He has a little bit to say, but I skipped the, the little scene there. And he'll give you the code to his safe. Which, in this case, was 875. And he's got some silver and some coins and stuff in there. And it's basically free money, guys. <laughs> because like I said it, we went to both of those places on the path that we were already taking so that's that's always good good news so you can go over to this little tree stump here and then from here you can get down onto the pipe that's beneath us and then from here you can get over to the roofs on the roofs on our right. And so <laughs> I put my displace marker over there. And so I'm just going to jump and, <laughs> and displace so that I don't have to worry about it doing, getting onto that little sign and then moving over. And right here, that's the first painting in this level. So that's your first Sinfuegos painting. You can break this glass without alerting anybody, which is nice. And there's a bone charm in there. That one is, is Void Conduit, which you get an extra potion of Void Energy, which is really good. And so I put it on just to demonstrate what, it, what it's like. So you get four 
void energies instead of three and then I'm going to take it off because like I promised I'm only going to be using agility but if you get that one if that one is one of the ones that is guaranteed then that's a really good one And so now we're going to come back out of this building. There's a guard patrolling right down there. And so we're just going to wait for him to move a little bit so that he's not looking at us. And then we're going to move over to the right. And you can get up on top of this. I don't know. I don't know what those are. Um, part of the, the pipe system, uh, for, for people's like heat, I'm not sure, furnaces, I, I don't know. Anyway, you get up on that and then you can get in here and I'm going to be getting another achievement or trophy here in a second. And so I'd recommend making a save before you do this because it doesn't always seem to work. This is the one where uh, we're going to get someone to, a guard to salute us. And so there's, to do that, you need to uh, use semblance on an elite guard to kind of take his face. And there is an elite guard right down here. And so I'm just waiting for this woman to move by so that she doesn't see me knock this guy out. And then you make sure that the, the other guard up there's back is turned. And then you just use semblance on that elite guard. It will knock him out. And then you can walk up here and talk to either of these guards that are up here. And so you hit X to talk to him. And if he doesn't salute you, you can go up here and talk to this other one. And if he doesn't salute you, then you can go back and talk to the other one again. And it's just kind of irritating. I, I went ahead and um, knocked this guy out. Or actually, I killed him. <laughs> I was a little bit annoyed, I think, because... Um, I wanted them to salute me and they didn't. And so he waved just then... And I, I guess that counts as a salute. It's very odd. But anyway, ha have a guard salute you. There you go. Good job. And then I stabbed him to death too. Because <laughs> I'm mean. <laughs> um, so that's how you get that achievement or trophy knocked out. And that's a really good spot right there to do it. So... We're now going to be heading on into the bar. And you'll notice that there's these uh, other folks right here. The racketeer and the racketeer's associate. And you could try to take them out right now. But I would actually recommend that you leave them uh, until last. Because they're probably going to alert a bunch of people. And if you're trying to do this without getting seen then you want to probably not set everybody on alert. So we'll do that at the end of the level. And right now, we just knock on the door, and because we got that tattoo, this guy is going to let us right in. And that is pretty cool. So you say right here... It shows him the tattoo that you have. He notes that you didn't do a very good job. But he lets you in anyway. And as soon as he lets you in, you can shut the door and go ahead and knock him out. And so you are not in hostile territory right now. But... If you didn't get the tattoo, what you can do is use semblance on the eyeless out there and then use semblance on this guy to be able to walk around in here. Uh, I don't know why I decided that I needed to use it just then because you don't. You can walk around in there just fine. You'll see me do it in a little bit. But I don't know. Mysteries. 
the mysteries of Dormouse 03's brain. <laughs> um, then there's this lady. You can knock her out too. And like I said, you, you don't need to use semblance on that guy. So, I mean, you can, but there's really not any point because you have the tattoo and you're one of them. So nobody cares that you're in here. Uh, so we're going to walk over here. And now you do want to be sort of sneaky with this part right here. Because I think if you go in this door and the guy in there sees you, he might get alerted even if you do have the tattoo. So try to be a little bit careful here. But there should be one guy in here who's kind of doing tests on this other dude. And so I killed him. Again, you don't have to kill him. You can knock him out if you want to. It just depends on whether you want to be merciful or not. And you want to turn off this lever and that will kill or actually it doesn't kill them it knocks out the three people who are sitting in some chairs who are kind of hooked up to this machine it knocks them out in the other room uh, straight across this wall and it will knock this civilian unconscious and now that is the brother that's one of the guys that you need to get out of here in order to complete one of the contracts and I'm not going to do that just yet because I'm going to be taking everybody out of here at once. The bartender downstairs is another person that you need to knock out and carry to a designated location for a different contract. So I'm going to I'm going to knock out all of that stuff at once once we go through this next section and are exiting. And so You'll see that those three people in the chairs, they're all knocked out, which is pretty cool. You can loot them all. I think they all have a whalebone on them. And those raw whale bones you use to make bone charms if you want to. That's not something that I'm going to be doing in this playthrough, but feel free to do that if you would like, because it's pretty cool. So I knocked out that other lady. She got upset because she saw that those people were unconscious, but she had no idea that it was me that did it. There are also two people in this room playing cards, and they have no idea that I'm here and don't care. So <laughs> you can take them out if you want to. I think it's more trouble than it's worth because they're never going to get alerted. So do not worry about that. There is, however, a locked cabinet in the room that they are sitting in and so I'm going to show you how to get the key to unlock that right now so you'll see that I'm able to walk around in here just fine nobody cares you didn't need to use semblance dormouse don't show people things that they don't need to do um, <laughs> so to get the key you want to use foresight to get through that little hole in the window and then you can displace in here and knock this lady out and then you can open the safe right here and in the safe is a key to that cabinet and then to get out of here you don't want to go through the door because if you go through the door people are going to see the lady's body and then you're going to be in trouble so you get out the same way that you got in <laughs> you use foresight to place a marker and then this place out of here and so there are five people one two three four five five people in this room and make a save here because this can go wrong <laughs> if and if it does you just want to be prepared so I would recommend setting up some traps for these people because you're going to want to take them out, but you don't want to kill the bartender. You want to make sure that the bartender gets knocked out. And so I'm going to put on my hook mine and make sure that that's toggled 
to non-lethal and so if if you need to hold it now it's lethal and then hold it again to make it non-lethal so you can toggle that on and off just make sure it's non-lethal right now and then I'm gonna lay down a few hook mines so there's one and there's two and there is three and so you can put down a fourth if you want to I only used three but I also shot a couple of people with my Voltaic gun so basically what you want to do is you want to headshot this guy that's right in front of us you make sure that the little thing is directly on his head and that you aren't any farther away than I am right now uh, kind of part way up the stairs there and then you shoot him in the head everybody is like oh my gosh what happened and then they're going to start patrolling around that lady stood right on top of his body and so I took her out and then there's only three people left there's one getting hooked in one of my hook mines here's the bartender who we wanted to knock out he got knocked out in one of the hook mines and then this third guy here if I had been a little quicker I could have shot him but I didn't need to because my third hook mine got him nobody ever saw me and the person who needed to be knocked out got knocked out so there you go that's that room taken care of but do know that you know that may not go as perfectly as it did for me and so you might need to reload that reload that a couple of times if you get unlucky with somebody not dying when they when they should you know missing a, a headshot or something like that um like i said you can also put down a fourth hook mine and that'll that'll make it so that you only need to headshot that first person and then all of the other four will get knocked out on the hook mines and the reason why we made them non-lethal is because i didn't know what order the people were going to come back in and you need to knock out the bartender and not kill him and so if i had made like some non-lethal and some lethal then it's possible that he could have gotten caught by one of the lethal ones and that would have messed us up for the contract so that's that sort of reasoning on why i did that the way i did it now we can open this cabinet with the key that we picked up and grab the stuff out of there there was actually one more thing if i had taken a, a second to stand up there was a war medal on that second shelf and I couldn't see it because I was crouched down but it's there so if you want that you can pick that up and so now we are gonna finish looting a couple of things and then move on to Sean Yun's house and so you can get to the third floor of Sean Yun's house by going through the door and I'm going back downstairs for no reason at all to know don't do that <laughs> You we're gonna go across here to Sean Yun's house and this is the second way into his house so the first way is outside it's the building straight across from this building and you use the uh, secret knock to get the maid to open the door but then you need to like teleport behind her or displace behind her or move out of the way so she doesn't see you because she'll get alerted and it's just easier to go in this way I think and so there's gonna be three guards here and this is I think the trickiest part of this particular section for sure is getting past these three guards because we're gonna need to get into a room to get an audiograph and there's an optional achievement or trophy there to get the audiograph without disabling the floor trap and 
it is it is not impossible, but it is tough to get into that room without being seen by the guards without disabling the floor trap. So I'm going to show you how to take out all three of these guards. It takes a little while because of their patterns and just kind of the way that the way that they patrol around here is it's very precise uh, how you need to take these people out because if you don't do it this way you're probably going to get seen and I definitely recommend making saves in between so that you have <laughs> so that you have a backup in case you know something goes wrong after you knock out the first guard or after you knock out the first two so I was doing a little bit of a, a little bit of dancing there in front of that guard because I was annoyed that it was taking a long time for him to move. <laughs> and so I think it's that you had to hear what those people down there were talking about. And maybe then he moves. So I opened the door. I think he, he heard the door open, and then he got out of being stuck. I, I, I don't know. I think he might have been stuck just there. Like, he wasn't on his, his regular pattern for whatever reason, but opening the door caused him to get back on track. So you may need to open the door there, guys. Just be aware of that. And so he's going to turn around, and as, as he turns around, you just want to make sure that he is still turned around. You saw that he turned back toward me. And so I'm now just waiting for him to turn and start to walk the other way. And now I'm going to knock out this maid. Because I certainly don't want her in the way. And potentially seeing me and freaking out and setting off alarms and calling guards and, you know, counting as an enemy spotting me. <laughs> Don't want that. And so now this guard is back and he's going to be back on his little pattern here. He's going to come and stand at the doorway and then when he starts to move, I'm going to move and get in front of the doorway or to the side of the doorway that he's standing near. And now you can use displace if you're quick to get right behind him and grab him, but I was not fast enough and so I needed to retreat. <laughs> because if I had grabbed him just then, the other guy that was walking across would probably have seen me and you don't want that to happen. And so I figured that the best course of action was going to be to just wait right here in this doorway. And I went ahead and placed a displace marker over to my right just in case he walked past the doorway. But he doesn't. So don't worry about that. He, he did sort of a weird pattern here. He didn't walk all the way up. And so I wasn't able to get behind him again which semi annoyed me and so <laughs> I placed a marker there so that I could displace behind him if I needed to it turned out that I didn't need to because he does his full his full little walk the next time but just be aware sometimes they do really strange things like because he stopped at that first little circle the that last time but he went all the way up to the second location this time, which is where we want him to be. And so, it's just very weird. I don't know. I don't know why it did that. Maybe he has this, this pattern where he walks up halfway one time and then the whole way the next time. But whatever the case may be, you get behind him, you grab him, you carry him. And I'm going to... Put him over here with the maid. I like to make piles of bodies 
<laughs> because it's like if one body's in a place where people can't see it, it's likely that the other body's probably going to be uh, in in a place where people can't see it if I put them in the same place. So I don't know. I, I end up with these piles of bodies sometimes, which is weird. So I placed a, a little displace marker right there. Because you're going to need to get out of here really quickly. So I come up, I grab this guy, and go to carry him. And you'll notice that the guard is, is walking back my way. But I was able to displace back over here and place this guy on the ground. And now <laughs> that th third guard now notices that his buddy is not where he should be standing. And you'd think that that would be bad, but it's actually pretty good. Because then he'll start patrolling. And you'll see that he's kind of just looking at the floor there for some reason. And I was able to get around behind him and knock him out. I almost displaced a little too far up. Uh, but I was still behind him and was able to knock him out. So just be careful probably didn't even need to use a displace there. You probably just could have snuck up on him. So try different things if you're having difficulty using the displace in that area. But that's that's all three guards down. You can also knock them out with electric darts. And so I, I just wanted to show you, in case you didn't have any of those, that you can knock them out just just using your abilities and the right bumper choke out so make a save here just in case you mess this up because that floor will kill you if you touch it at all you want to displace up onto this display case and then use your peak mechanic uh, you hold down the y button or the triangle button and lean out and use your sticks to be able to see the little door and you open it up and then you can now displace into the display case, which is kind of weird, but it works. So you want to make sure that you are on the little lip and it should look exactly like that. And you'll see her kind of crouched in there. And then you pick up this golden locks and displace back out and that is the golden locks achievement or trophy for stealing the audiograph without disabling the electric floor which is awesome and now the second painting of this level is going to be over here on the right So it's in that door and there's a painting. It is going to be painting number two of three on mission two. And there's really nobody around here. So you don't have to worry about being seen when you're making your way over to that one. The people that you want are in that, that room that we just passed. And uh, this room has some things that you can pick up that will be helpful to you. It's got some stuff that you can, can use for cash. But it also has a couple of weapons and consumable items. So it has a hyperbaric grenade. And it has a rewire tool. So in case you need to use that at any point. Just make sure that you don't use it on the next mission in the bank because that will void the uh, achievement or trophy for doing the perfect robbery, the perfect crime. But if you're not doing that, then feel free to use the rewire tool. <laughs> so we're just placing up onto this little mantle. And then there should be two guards in this room. And then Sean Yun is in the room next door. So this one lady guard is going to kind of mill around. 
And you want to wait for her to do her full little pattern here. She's going to come and talk to the guard that's right beneath us. I'm going to go ahead and place that displace marker right down behind that guard. And then we're going to wait for her to come and have that conversation with him. And then walk away. And then you displace down behind him. You choke him out. Or you can kill him. But I chose to be merciful there. And then you can displace behind her or just walk up behind her and knock her out as well. And then the last little obstacle here is Sean himself. And so you can see him through this little grate here. You can, I was looking to see if there were any cheeky little places that I could get through, but there's not. So you can kind of see him, and when he starts singing, he won't do any of these little things where he's like kind of turning around and whatnot. So he starts singing, and then you can go through the doors here and get behind him and knock him out. And you definitely want to knock him out and not kill him. Because you're going to want to use semblance on him for another achievement or trophy. But before we do that, we're going to pick up our third painting on this level. So that's Sinfuego's painting number three on mission four. It's a total of four that we've gotten now. Did I say mission four? I meant mission two. The third painting on mission two. And we have a total of four because there was one in the first mission. Geez. And so there's a couple of things that you can pick up in this in this room. Again, just letting you know where you can pick up a few items that you can have some coins to be able to spend at the shop as you see fit. And just in case you didn't have enough for any of those upgrades. So you're going to use semblance on Sean Yun. And then we're going to walk over here to the safe. And there should be a microphone right to the left of it. And you want to use the microphone. And when it asks you to, uh, you want to choose sing. And then you're going to hear lovely singing by Billy here. And you're going to get your achievement or trophy Nightingale to use semblance to mim mimic Sean Yun and sing into the microphone. But it doesn't work to open the, the safe. Uh, you need to put that Golden Locks audiograph into the player. Any of the other audiographs will not work. And that will open the safe. So there's a bone charm in there. And there's your second key. And once you have both of those, you will get your achievement or trophy two turns to take both bank vault keys. And so we picked the one up from Ivan Jacoby's office earlier, and that was our second one. And so pick up any anything on the way out that you want to pick up, and we're going to just make our way back out of here the way that we came. And so there should be no resistance, because we've already taken out all the guards that are in our path, and... We're just going to head straight on out of here back to the Spectre Club. Now, once you get it back into the Spectre Club, you want to get both of these guys who are knocked out for our contracts out of here. And so the first one we're going to pick up is is this guy, Brother Albert, I think is his name. And I used a displace to get by that door just in case those ladies decided that they wanted to randomly turn around. I'm 99% sure that they won't, but just in case, I went ahead and, and made it so that they couldn't see me. So, you want to carry 
Mr. Albert. And I like to just, he's going to be the second person that I carry out of here. And so I'm going to put him down by the door. So lay him down on the floor. And then I'm going to go back and pick up the bartender because the bartender is, is the one that I'm going to do first. You can do these in either order. But the bartender has a little bit of a shorter way to go. So I'm going to take him first. One thing that you do want to make sure that you do <laughs> is when you go out of this, when you go out of this door in front of us, whichever one of these guys you choose to take, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to be taking both of them, but you want to make sure that you shut this door because if you don't, people are going to see inside of there. They're going to see people that you've knocked out. The guards are going to be patrolling. They're going to be wondering why there are people who are unconscious. And it's just going to get a little bit more chaotic. And we don't want that. So, going to displace over here. And then up onto this pipe. And we're taking the bartender to the roof of the tattoo parlor. And so... You just want to displace up onto that little light pole and then you can get from there right up on top of the roof and drop him in this box and that will complete that contract. So there we go. Kidnap the bartender is done. And now we're going to go right back the way that we came and grab the other guy. And once again, when you grab his body, you want to make sure that you shut the door behind you. You also want to just kind of make sure nobody's looking. Because if they see you carrying an unconscious body, they're going to get twitchy. So we shut the door. And we're going to go back the exact same way, except this person is going to go into the room across from the fisherman. So we're going to displace here, we're going to get back up onto this pipe, and then we're going to go from the pipe onto the balcony across from it. And from there, you can hop up onto the little banister, hop down to the other little roof ledge, and then to the other balcony, and down to the room where this guy needs to go. Something that has happened to me every time I've done this level, at this point, point somebody finds a body somewhere now I don't know where they find the body I don't know what is up with that but they start to run around and get all crazy you put that guy down you've completed the contract you just want to make sure there is a like a bottle of alcohol uh, to the to that guy's left right up there you just want to make sure that you don't throw him on top of that because it will burst into flames kill him and um void your contract so just be careful throwing him down on the mattress but that's really the only thing that can go wrong there you'll see that people are just sort of running around going oh my god what's going on everything's crazy somebody's dead ah I don't know. I Honestly, I don't know who they found. But it doesn't really matter. They haven't seen you. And so as long as you haven't been spotted and you can check your stats to make sure that you haven't been spotted. But as long as you haven't been spotted, you will be fine. So now, th this is why I wanted you guys to do this last. Because these two people are severely annoying. Uh, I chose to kill them with a sticky grenade. You could probably do it with a regular grenade. I know you can do it with a spring razor, but you will get detected because you have to get close to them to throw it or to put it down. So 
toss your sticky grenade in between them and quickly move out of that area because you'll see that the contract got completed. I would recommend making a save before you do that because if for whatever reason the grenade is not at quite the right place and doesn't kill both of them, you'll need to reload and, and try again. But you should be able to get both of them with that one toss. And now for the last contract of the mission. The Mime. So I shot him with electric burst, electric bolt, whatever it's called, uh, to knock him out. And the two people that were next to him get freaked out because of course they do. <laughs> and so the lady is going to run over here. You can displace around behind her. And you just want to make sure when you go to knock her out that the guy is kind of looking away. And you'll see that he is. You'll see that, that they will go back to their original position. They don't stay freaked out for very long. So she was moving back to her original position there. And he is back in his. And so we're going to knock him out. You might want to move his body uh, to somewhere where it's not going to be found. Because what happens to me is that somebody sees one of their bodies and uh, calls the guard over. And so I got worried. I dropped that guy's body right there. And then I moved down here because we also need to take out this guy who is fishing. Because if he sees you carrying a body, he's going to get alerted. So, it was your lucky day, buddy. You didn't get hooked this time. You got knocked out and left about right there. And about this time, as I'm coming up the stairs, the guard that is up there patrolling is going to be moving toward the body that I left right there. He's going to see it. I got really concerned that I needed to get out of here, but he does not come down here. Because I, I left the body far enough up there, he's not going to walk down to where I am. He's going to kind of turn around and keep moving. And so he's going to start walking back to his original location. And all is well. So, like I said, you may want to move that, that man's body out of the way. Because somebody saw it. And, and things got a little bit haywire. But it worked out okay in the end. So now we're going to come down here. And toss this guy's body off of this cliff. He needs to be unconscious and not dead before you throw him because you're, you're trying to make it look like a suicide. So that's why we knocked him out with the electric burst instead of just shooting him in the head. All right. So the last little thing that I have to say about this level is that if you want to pick up any more upgrades or any more items from the black market, you can do so right now. And you should have enough money from all of the paintings and all of the other stuff that we picked up to be able to grab anything that you really need or want. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up the concealment finish. And so that is the last upgrade that I'm going to be purchasing. Like I said, if there are other things that you want to purchase, then now is a perfect time to do so. And like I said, you should have enough coins to buy a couple more things if you want to. I'm going to head out this way. Just as a reminder, you can come through here and it's a bit of a safer route than going the other way because nobody's going to see you in here and if you hop down here 
you can actually take this little skiff, and I recommend that you do, uh, take this little skiff to the end of the level, and you don't have to go back to the carriage and everything. So you can just end the level right there, and there you go. So we killed some people and didn't get uh, merciful, but that's okay. You couldn't have gotten that on this one anyway, not if you're doing all the contracts, because you needed to kill the mime. And so it didn't matter if you killed people or not. You just wanted to, uh, to keep the people alive who you needed to keep alive for your contracts. And we did all of that. Uh, but we did get the ghostly box ticked off which is very nice, which means that you should be, if you followed this, on track for your shadow achievement or trophy at the end. And I believe that this is the most difficult level to do that on because there were just so many different contracts and things and having to kill people and all sorts of stuff. But there you go. That is mission number two in the bag. I hope that it was helpful to you. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.